Batman is one of the greatest heroes ever, and he has trained a small army of sidekicks that started out as children and have grown up to be world-class heroes in their own right. And it comes as no surprise that when you teach the next generation everything that you know, that they may end up surpassing you. And while no one Robin on his own is better than Batman outright, each of the Robins has something that they're better at than Batman is. Now, in some respects, this has more to do with each character having their own personality traits and as such leaning towards certain skills over others. Such as Damien being quite violent means he's kind of leaning towards learning aggressive martial arts than the others do. But still, each Robin does have one thing or more that they're better at than Batman is. And this video is going to take a look at how the Robins surpass Batman. Tim Drake, smarter. Batman has a genius level intellect, it's true. But Tim has an even more ingenious level intellect. And this has been shown in a lot of ways. For example, in the game Arkham Knight, it's Tim Drake who is working on figuring out the top secret cure for the Joker turning disease. He's doing it because basically he's smarter than Batman and he's able to work out the science better than Batman is, so that's why he's there. He is of course a sidekick, I know, but it's also the fact that he just knows what he's doing more. And in the comics, he's actually created greater contraptions than Batman. One thing that comes to mind in particular is when he designed a new HQ that was so advanced that the building was actually able to heal itself. When the windows were broken when the place was attacked, machines and computers came out and replaced them and performed repairs to make the place as good as new. In fact, he's so smart that he even considered giving up the vigilante lifestyle to go to university as Tim Drake feels that he may actually save more lives with science than he can as a hero. And to be fair, he probably would, but it's quite unlikely that DC Comics are going to give up the character of Red Robin anytime soon. And Batman has even said before that more so than any of the other Robins, Tim Drake is the detective. He's the one who wants to surpass Batman as a detective and become the best in the world. And that day may have already arrived, in fact, when Batman was killed, it was Tim Drake who was able to work out that he was still alive. And he was able to look into it and investigate and find Batman and find a way to save him. And while some might say that he hasn't surpassed Batman as a detective yet, he has most likely surpassed him in intellect. It's hard to tell and it's hard to gauge in these things because let's face it, in different versions, some of them are smarter and some of them are dumber. But on the whole, Tim Drake is ingenious and I would say that he is smarter than Batman. Dick Grayson, better acrobat. Now, Dick Grayson is not only a better acrobat than Batman, he's actually better than anyone else on the planet, short of those with superpowers, of course. He's more skilled than anyone in the world of DC. And he is one of only three people who are capable of doing a quadruple flip. Now, this is an insanely difficult trick that is actually possible in the real world, though very few people on the planet can do it, as it is extremely dangerous and a lot of people have attempted the feat and actually broke their necks, and some of them have died from this, and some have become paralyzed. So, like I say, it's very difficult to do. But Dick Grayson is so good that he is able to do this whenever he wants, though Batman, it seems, cannot. Though the downside to him being able to do this quadruple flip is that it was the way that Tim Drake worked out that he was actually Robin, and therefore Bruce Wayne was Batman. You see, Tim Drake had seen Dick Grayson perform this quadruple flip at Haley's Circus, and then when he saw Robin do the same, he realized it must be the same person. Which again is quite a good notch to Tim Drake being a detective, because he was able to work it out quite simply just from that. So it does go to show his skill. But because Dick Grayson is able to do this quadruple flip, it means that in terms of grappling over rooftops and athletic skill, Nightwing is better than Batman. Though given that he was born and raised as an acrobat in a circus and then adopted by Batman and trained as Robin, well, it does kind of make sense that he would be the best. Damian Wayne, a better fighter. Now, considering that Damian was genetically altered in the womb to be stronger than a normal human and he was then raised by a cult of assassins and trained to be the ultimate killer, it does kind of make sense that Damian is a better fighter than Batman. Now, to be clear on this, I don't mean that the Damian Wayne that we see as a child is better than Batman, because he's not. True, he has beaten Batman here and there in fights, and even managed to hold his own in other fights, but that's just a combination of Batman not wanting to hurt his son, and bad writing. As a kid, just can't beat up Batman, no matter how well trained and genetically altered he is. Unless he's altered to having superpowers, and even then, it probably wouldn't matter. After all, this guy has taken down Superman, 
and Batman has beaten Bane, Clayface and Grundy in a fist fight. So a kid doesn't compare to that, even when he's been enhanced. But when Damien grows to adulthood, like we see in the Batman Beyond comic book series, well that's a different story altogether, as Damien is way better than Bruce Wayne ever was. Bruce even admits that he is the greatest fighter that he has ever seen, and possibly the greatest fighter that's ever lived, far surpassing Bruce Wayne even when he was at his peak as Batman. Now again, this isn't very surprising given his origins, but still, Damien is a better fighter, even though his temper control and pride do desperately need some improvement. And there's one other area where he surpasses him that's actually a little bit unusual. You see, Damien Wayne is also a master ventriloquist and impersonator. Like I say, a little bit out there, but on Damien Wayne's first night in the Wayne Mansion, he is able to override the voice recognition locks of the Batcave just by imitating the other's voices, and he can do a practically perfect impression of Tim Drake. So good that it's actually able to fool the state-of-the-art voice locks, which is very impressive, and it doesn't seem to be a skill that Batman has. Now, Damien doesn't really use this very often, in fact I can't actually think of a time he has used it since the first time, I imagine he has somewhere, but even still, it's something that he has over Batman, though really the fact that he's a better fighter is kind of more impressive. Jason Todd Now, when Jason Todd came out of the Lazarus Pit, some versions of his character say that he came out enhanced, that he was stronger, smarter, and able to heal faster than a normal human. Which does make sense given that the Lazarus Pit is basically just a pit of life force. So he does have this over Batman to begin with, depending on the version of Jason Todd we're talking about. But the skill I think Jason has that is superior to Batman is his willpower and determination. Now I know that may seem unlikely since we're talking about Batman after all, but let's look at the facts. After Jason returned from the grave and went in the pit, he wanted to take down the Joker and even Batman for not avenging him. But he didn't want to just go against Batman then, because Batman taught him everything he knew and would easily be able to take him down. So instead, he travelled the world learning all the martial arts he could, just as Batman did, and then planned to take over the crime of Gotham, as was shown in the film Batman Under the Red Hood. And he did become a crime lord in Gotham and took control of most of the gun trafficking and drug trade, even muscling out Black Mask, who is the most powerful criminal in the city at this point. And in the Arkham Knight video game, he managed to organise all of the villains of Gotham, get them to give him three billion dollars, and then use it to hire and train his own army, complete with tanks, air support, and all the high-tech armour and guns that you could buy. And he is able to take over Gotham because of this. You see, Jason Todd has an amazing ability to plan, and carry out that plan. And unlike a lot of the Bat family, he's not afraid to do what needs to be done. And this is why I say that his willpower and determination is so great, because he's able to do things that very few people on the planet could. And this is because he's able to focus on what he wants to do and what he wants to happen, and then he makes it a reality, through sheer determination and willpower. And even if this willpower and determination isn't greater than Batman's, it is at least on par with it. But there is one other thing that to my mind proves that he has greater determination than Batman, and that is that he doesn't see the world as so black and white. And by that I mean that Batman has said before that he would like nothing more than to kill the Joker. But the problem is, if he kills the Joker, then he'll go and kill the Penguin, the Riddler, Bane, Two-Face, and so on through his rogues gallery, because he won't be able to stop himself from killing them all. And the only way to stop him from going kill crazy is to just not kill anyone. And that's why he has his no killing rule. Whereas Jason Todd is able to kill those who needs to be killed and spare others. Basically, he actually has more self-control than Batman. He has more control over his personality and doesn't give in to his rage in the same way. Now, that's not to say that he hasn't given in to his anger and rage at times. I mean, that's kind of what the Red Hood was all about to begin with. But the point is that he is able to actually look at a situation and decide, no, the Joker needs to die because he's the worst of the worst. But that doesn't mean I have to kill everyone. He has that determination and control to do that, but Batman isn't able to. And it's because of this that Batman actually thought that Jason Todd was insane. And so he arranged for him to go to Arkham Asylum under an alias so that he could get treatment. And yet to Batman's surprise, while Jason was there, he was declared legally sane. You see, he's not insane. He just feels that some criminals do need to be killed. And quite frankly, I kind of agree with him. I'm actually not for the death penalty, to be fair. But when we're talking about people like the Joker, who continually escape and are a threat to pretty much the entire human race, killing thousands and thousands of people, 
Well, someone like that just needs to be put down for the safety of us all. And the fact that Jason Todd is sane also gives him one over on Batman, because, let's be honest, Batman is not exactly the perfect picture of mental health. And that's how Jason is better than him. He just has more control over himself and is able to do things that Batman can't, and not give in to his rage and his vengeance. Even though Jason Todd's rage and vengeance is probably on par with Batman's, if not greater. After all, Batman's parents may have been killed, but Jason was killed, so in some respects, it's actually a lot more personal. And that is some of the ways that the Robins are better than Batman. And finally, I just want to mention that one thing that all of the Robins seem to be able to do better than Batman is to move on. They've all kind of moved on and formed their own teams, which are kind of like their own families, and even got involved in different relationships so they can basically become adults and get on with their life. Whereas Batman is very much stuck being alone in his mansion. Now, I'm not saying that it's gone perfectly for the Robins. As we all know, their relationships and their families have had quite a lot of rough patches over the years. But still, they seem to be able to move on better than Batman can. And it does seem likely that none of them are going to die as old, lonely men in a mansion. Whereas Batman very much might. But what do you think of the Robins? Do you agree that they are better than Batman in the areas that I mentioned? Or do you think that they are better than him in other ways? Or that the Robins are just not better than Batman at all? Be sure to let us know in the comments. And I'd like to say a quick thank you to those who made this video possible by donating to the Needle Mouse Productions page on Patreon. As always, thanks for watching and feel free to subscribe, share, like and comment.